LB, as he is known amongst his peers, slowly turns his head away from her and continues his gaze towards earth. Yes, I am aware. Leave me. The young lady scrambles away and murmurs multiple thank yous as she heads back to the shipyard, stumbling over her foot as she attempts to navigate away from the director. LB cracks a smile as he watches the young subaltern tripping over herself from the view screen reflection. Let them wait. He continues his ritual and shifts his gaze to the project, the large vessel tethered within the dry dock of the shipyard was a buzz with drones and work crews tending to her. The size and the design were revolutionary and mimicked nature's equivalent in the guise of an avian. LB is proud of his design even though he had an extremely hard time trying to marry UNE cultural correctness. Functional requirements are paramount in the design philosophy of the UNE. Aesthetic considerations were never necessary. Similarly, freedom of expression was usually frowned upon as the collective good overcomes all. UNE machinery makes innovation a very painful process. His pride and joy, the new Garuda class vessel, is designed with the ability for long-range scientific and exploration duties whilst being adequately armed and defended. Its modular configuration allows for painless upgrades for all systems when necessary. It was meant to be the pathfinding vessel in preparation of faster than light travel, the precursor to interstellar exploration. LB sighs and turns his head to the direction of the project meeting room where the heads of the department were eagerly waiting for him to chair the monthly progress updates meant to serve as a report to fleet. LB has seen it all. The scramble for influence, the one-upmanship in the name of power and influence in the core. He had honestly reached a point where he questioned his continued participation in something he obviously doesn't agree. It was never like this. He was full of hope and vigour when he first joined the service. But then, he began questioning why certain things were never brought and discussed in the course decision-making structure. It began with the continued exodus and the setting up of numerous home states. The uncoordinated chaos of it all was somewhat appealing to LB. Many of his friends and family members uprooted and moved. Mars, the Belt, and other homesteads were the favoured destination. There was a huge talent outflow during that period. The ones that were left behind had to double their efforts and to plod on regardless. It started as an innocent exchange of ideas, a sounding board for new ways of doing things. These communities were kept covert to avoid unwanted attention. As the membership they began to create formalized structures and charters, all the while ensuring strict confidentiality of their existence. To fund their activity, they began commercial enterprises to offer products and services to UNE and its many other agencies. Before long, they were directly competing with the Terendak Shenzhen Behemoth on almost all of the UNE procurement activities albeit through multiple entities. LB smiled as he remembers getting much needed schematics of the latest frigate designs for the collective, the unofficial name of the community. He was informed that the schematics were needed to design something smaller and would be utilized by the burgeoning settlements throughout the system. He was initially aghast at the thought of being caught for treason, but he rationalized it as a critical requirement for the defense of these home states, as the UNE had begun to reduce its patrols and defensive duties at these far-flung locations.